Okay, Keith here from uh, Beat the Casino. I wanted to go over the basic concepts of Beat the Casino. Uh, one, for actually uh, free members, and also for members who are uh, members of our private club, and, and need to understand the basics. So, I thought I'd make a video to make it really clear uh, how we look at things and, and, and uh, how we analyze a shoe and at least get the terminology straight for you. So the first thing, uh, I, we're gonna use this uh, vertical scorecard. I know some of you are used to the traditional, I just bring this into view, traditional uh, scorecard. But we're gonna use a vertical scorecard because it makes things just a little bit clearer with respect to how we look at things sometimes. Um, so the first thing is a very simple concept, and it's the first one kind of in our list of things to know. And it's a simply uh, is, is an opposite. An opposite, these are opposites. If this is the player side, and if I put a circle and it wins, then if I go to the other side and the banker wins, that's called it, this is an opposite. Here's an opposite, and here's an opposite. Pretty simple concept, okay? But just to be clear, what is a repeat? This is a repeat then this is an opposite. Those are repeats, okay? So, you know, opposites and repeats, pretty much uh, self-explanatory. What is an event? An event is any, any uh, combination of uh, repeats or opposites. Uh, this is one event, this is one event, this is one event, this is one event is pretty much how we look at it. This would be one event. Sometimes we group opposites as one event. This would be one event. See, in, in many cases. So the context of an event, you have to look at it in context. Sometimes they're just singular, uh, isolated incidents, and sometimes we call an event of uh, a group of repeats or a group of opposites. So this is a group of uh, opposites, and this is a group of repeats. One thing I want to make clear is how we count opposites and repeats, uh, which sometimes is a point of confusion. We call them one in a rows, two in a rows, three in a rows. So a one in a row refers to lengths of events of consecutive wins where there's alternating patterns. So what is a, a one in a row pattern? Well, a one in a row pattern would be this. So a series of one in a rows. And then here it goes into a repeat pattern. Now, to count these, I want to be very clear. This is not one, two, three, four, five. It isn't a pattern of five one in a rows or a pattern of five opposites. It's a pattern of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have to count the first one, which will always be the last one of a repeat, and the first one of a repeat, starting a new pattern. So this is a, a group of opposites, or a group of one in a rows, rather, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven long. Okay, not five long, two, three, four, five, okay? So just to be clear, if this is a pattern of one in a rows, let's say it starts here, and this is the last part of the shoe. Let's go one more. Okay, so let's say the shoe ends here. This is a pattern of one, two, three, four, five, six, one in a rows. But this last one we would consider unconfirmed because we don't know since the shoe ended if it would have went here to an opposite again or if it would have just went to a two in a row. Okay, so those are confirmed one in a rows. Potential one in a rows is just what, how, when we refer to one in a rows, a potential one in a row is, is, is pretty obvious now. You probably understand it. Um, this is a potential one in a row. We don't know what happened yet, so it has a potential for it to go opposite, okay? Let's say, for instance, if it goes to the one in a row, then this is a confirmed one in a row, and this is a potential one in a row. If this goes to a two in a row, this is a potential two in a row, okay? When it goes here, this is a confirmed two in a row, okay? If it goes here, and let's say it, the next hand is this, this is a potential three in a row. 
get the idea. So that's how we that's how we look at events and how we categorize events. So it, it's important to be clear on those. Okay. What is it when we refer to a zigzag run? Well, again, a zigzag one is just a series of one in a row. It's just kind of uh, just another way to say one in a row. Okay, so that's a zigzag run. It's a zigzag run of one, two, three, four, five. Okay, you know, a straight run, of course, is some of the terminology. This is a straight run. A one, two, three, four, five. So a straight run of five on player. Okay. Okay, so let's let's go in a little bit deeper. Some of the things you may hear. Um, what is t time before last? Time before last is just an old Baccarat system that's very easy to play, and the data that it uses or the information it uses to make a bet is, let's say, for instance, we start off here with a game, player banker, and time before last bets this. It bets what happened the time before. Okay, so if this is the current hand that, that was just played, the hand that won before that is this. And time before last says, bet that hand. So we would bet that hand. And hopefully, it won. Okay. If you're betting time before last, now you're going to bet this hand. Okay, let's say, for instance, if you bet time before last, now this hand, you're going to bet here. Let's say, for instance, it lost. So now the bet for time before last is banker. Here's the current hand. Here's the time before last. So hopefully that'll win for you. Okay. So it's very simple. Just go back two hands and bet what that was. You can see it's going to beat long runs. So when it goes here. Now if it goes over here this time, what we're going to bet is you're going to go back to banker. Okay. And you can see what will happen now. If there's long or straight runs time before, time before last, will actually win. Okay. Let's take a look at opposite time before last, which is the next thing that we talk about quite a lot, quite a bit, I guess I should say. Okay, so opposite time before last is this, is you bet opposite what just happened the time before last. So here's the time before last. Now in time before last, we would bet here. Opposite time before last, we would just simply bet over here. Okay, here. Okay. Going to bet opposite time before last. Here's the, here's the current hand. Here's the previous hand. We're going to bet opposite of this. We'll banker one, so we're going to bet here. Okay. Here's the time before last now. We're going to bet opposite. So there you go. Now, what happens if you... If, okay, so now here, here's the time before last hand. So we're going to bet over here. But let's say that one, or that one. I guess I should put a circle there, huh? Okay. So opposite time before last, you're, you're here on player, it's going to bet here. Okay, So you can see the culprit of opposite time before last is actually long runs. However, opposite time before last does really well with two in a row. Okay, let's, let's continue with time before last. Let me get a new scorecard here. I'm running out of them. So when thinking about opposite time before last, there's a real simple way. Someone came up with this in the forum one time and everybody went, yeah, right. That's pretty simple. Sometimes it can be difficult to kind of look back and go, okay, I'm going to bet opposite of what just happened. So there's a real simple way. Let me just put some hands in here. There's a real simple way to, uh, to bet time, opposite time before last with one simple rule. Since you understand opposites and repeats now, it's simple. After an opposite, here's our opposite, okay? Bet repeat. After a repeat, bet opposite. Okay? So this is an opposite, so I'm going to bet repeat. Okay, let's say, for instance, that lost. After an opposite, bet repeat. After a repeat, bet opposite. After a repeat, bet opposite. After a repeat, okay, bet opposite. And you can see it will always work out right with the time before last rule. So that's two really basic Baccarat systems, opposite time before last and time before last. Now, it, the data they look at is, is pretty insignificant um, in all reality, but it's kind of a, an interesting way to play when you're just starting out and you're playing for low stakes. So time before last and opposite time before last. Obviously, um, time before last likes long runs. 
and opposite time before last likes two in a row. Okay, so f betting, what, you know, what do we say when we flat betting? Well, I've been flat betting it all along here. Flat betting is simply betting the same amount every time. So if I bet one here and it wins, one here, whether I win or lose, I'm still betting the same amount. And this could be $10, $25, $50, or $100. You're always just betting the same amount. So that's what we mean when we say flat betting. What do we mean when we say progression? A progression can be a positive progression or a negative progression or some combination of, of uh, either. And I think you probably understand this, but if I'm betting, I'm going to put in dollar signs now. So if you bet $25 on this hand and it wins, and then you bet $50 on this hand, we would call that an up as you win progression, where this would be one and this would be two. So you bet one green chip here and two green chips here. And it can go to the sky as far as, uh, you know, up as you win goes. Uh, let's say, for instance, you bet $25 here, which would be one chip, and that wins. Then, uh, oh, I'm sorry, let's do this again. Sorry, let me, I re misstated. Suppose I bet $25 on Banker, and it loses. Now, up as you lose is, suppose I bet $50 on Banker, and it loses. Then I bet $75 on Banker and it loses. That's an up as you lose progression, okay? Then I'd bet $100 on Banker and say that would win. This would be a one, two, three, four negative progression, okay? We call that, sometimes we call that a negative progression, up as you lose progression, however you wanna understand it. Anytime you bet more after you lose, it's, it's called a negative or up as you lose progression. Uh, they can be uh, effective, but they're very dangerous depending upon how far you go um, up as you lose progressions. Okay, so how do we count? How, what, what do we count? What, when you first start at Beat the Casino, what's the first basic information that you use? Well, if you first of all learn time before last, the data that you're looking at is what won the hand before. So, you know, you have to determine is that information significant? Well, some, some players that's the only way they play. They just simply look at the time before last hand and decide what to bet. And that's fine if you're a casual player. When you start getting down into some more uh, significant information in the game, we have what we call the opposite repeat count, okay? It's a statistic that tracks the relationship between the frequency of opposites and repeat. The most common count for OR is plus one for opposite and minus one for repeat. That way, over the course of many hands, you can kind of see which one is ahead. Uh, so for instance, let's say for instance, you st it starts off with player and then it goes to banker. So that, it, that is an opposite, okay? So if, if you have an opposite, okay, we count that as plus one. If it goes opposite again, now we say the count is plus two. It's favoring opposites. If it goes again, it's plus two. Three. Let's say, for instance, it repeats. Now we're at plus two. It repeats again. Plus one. It repeats again. Zero. It repeats again. Minus one. Goes opposite. Zero. Goes opposite. Plus one. Opposite. Plus two. Repeat. Plus one. So that is one of the tracking mecha mechanisms we use, and one of the uh, statistics that we actually use at Beat the Casino. It's called the opposite repeat count. So you get it. You can kind of see a trend here where the the um, the uh, zigzag or opposites kind of went up a little bit, then it kind of came back down with repeats, then it went up. So you can get a kind of get a feel for the game and see which way it's favoring most. If you if you keep an opposite repeat repeat count, it can certainly help you make a decision on what to bet based upon what seems to be more prevalent in the game, okay? Event count. Event count is, is simply, we used to call this the SAP count, and, and the SAP count is, is simply just this, and it, and it talks about, you know what, let me get a new scorecard here because I'll run out of room. I'll, I may bring that one back in, but to show you the SAP count or the event count, it just simply assigns a variable uh, to events and then compares them. In other words, a one in a rows, one in a rows, two in a rows, three in a rows, and four in a rows uh, pretty much happen at, in a random game at, at specific frequencies over the long haul. Of course, we don't play over the long haul, which is another topic 
which you can read about in the private forum. But that aside, let's say, for instance, and I'm going to put a little column up here, ones, twos, threes, and four or mores. Okay. So to keep the event count, so we can see if they're what how what frequency they're occurring with in relationship to each other. Well, one in a row are going to become the most prevalent. So we count them as plus one. And, and you have to wait till the event. It has to be confirmed events. So let's say, for instance, the game starts off like this, player, banker. Well, this is the first one in a row as soon as this goes over here. So in the event count, we have a plus one count for ones. Okay. Now, if it goes to here, now we have a plus two count for ones. If it goes to here, now we have a plus three count for once. Now, let's say, for instance, it goes here. Now, that's a potential two in a row. We don't know if it's going to be a two in a row or it's going to be a 20 in a row at this point. Okay, But just for example purposes, let's say it goes here. Now, two in a rows with the event count, we count as plus two. Okay, So as soon as this goes to a confirmed two in a row, we're going to go ahead and put plus two here. So we can kind of get a comparison here. Since these count plus one and these count plus two, we can see that pretty much one in a rows and two in a rows are occurring pretty close to what we would expect them to occur at this point in the game or at any point in the game. The uh, a one count is at plus three and the two counts are at plus two. Okay. Now let, let's go ahead and put a couple other ones in here. Let's put a three in a row in here. Okay, now this wasn't a two in a row, and it was a three in a row. So three in a rows, if you you know if we had a computer at the game, we could actually put in a specific value to make it all balanced, but we didn't. We count plus threes as plus four. Okay, so which actually is is pretty accurate. Um, at this point, when we count that as plus four, then we put in after it turns here, we put in a plus four. Now, if we compare the counts, if we bring all these down, and you don't really have to do this, but I do sometimes just to kind of get a thing, you can see that this game here is, is pretty, has a pretty even distribution of ones, twos, and threes, okay? Based on the numbers, that, the values that we assign to events. Now, if this goes over here, now our plus our sap count or our event count for ones went to plus four. Then if this comes here and then this goes over here, we add two more to here, plus four. So the frequency of ones and twos are about have, have about a normal distribution. Okay. Let's add one more here. So we got to bring the bring the two count or the one count down. I'm sorry, that's going to go to plus five. The two count didn't change. Okay, and let's go over here. So now we have a plus five one count. We got to add, bring down this one. We don't add to it since it wasn't a two in a row. This was a three, a confirmed three in a row. Now we add four here. So this is plus eight. Okay, so now we see that three in a row are occurring probably just a little, slightly a little bit more than what they should at this point in the game. Okay, okay, so now if we do this, we have a one in a row, okay? And then let's go ahead and say, for instance, that this was a four in a row, okay? Well, this is plus eight then. We add fours or more, add plus eight. And this is a balance count. So we actually tweak it sometimes. So I, I like bringing the counts down. You actually have time, okay? So now we see that in this game that the four in a rows and the three in a rows pretty much happen at the normal frequency. Okay, the one in a rows and the two in a rows are pretty much pretty close to. So those are the event counts, how we how we look at them. So if you see us playing in the casino and everybody wants to know what all these numbers are for, that's really all we're doing. We're just assigning a value to one in a rows, two in a rows, and then and three in a rows, four or more in a rows, and we're just kind of able to at a glance see if the frequency that they're occurring is about correct. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at the next thing that we talk about. We talk about modes. And modes, I, I'm not sure why we came up with this modes, uh, because it's simply, simply stated as just how many times in a row you lose before you switch. So 
modes are this. And, and first of all, let, let me just explain. I'm sorry. Let me backtrack. You can only really bet an opposite or repeat. Yeah, you can bet ties, but for now we're just ignoring them. So on any approach that you have, you're either going to bet it's going to repeat on the same side or it's going to go opposite. And there isn't anything else more you can bet in Baccarat. Okay. A mode is just simply how many times you lose before you switch from one to the other. So a basic system, let's say, for instance, the one I showed you earlier, let's say, for instance, we're betting, let's say, for instance, it started off like this, player banker, and you're betting time before last. And let's say that that lost. So you bet one bet on that and it lost. So now time before last would bet here. Okay. Well, let's say that went to player. Now you lost two times in a row. Okay. So if you're going to bet time before last, it's going to bet banker. And let's say, for instance, that lost. Okay. So that's three losses in a row. We would call that mode three. Okay. If you're playing a system in mode three, after three losses, you switch systems. That's what it means. So in other words, here I'm playing time before last. Well, I'm going to switch at this point after I lost three times in a row. Instead of playing time before last, okay, which would make the bet here, I'm going to bet opposite time before last. Okay. So hopefully that that adjustment kind of got you a, uh, a better results in the game, okay? So that's what the modes are, is how many times in a row you lose. Now, if we were playing mode two, we wouldn't have waited for this loss. We would have switched here. And in mode, well, let me, let me just show you. Let's, let's put the same game up. So I want to make sure my monitor is correct here. So here, here's the game, okay? So the first bet we bet here, and then the next bet we bet here. If after the second loss we decided to change and, and go to opposite time before last, the bet would have been here. So the mode is just how many you lose before you switch systems. Okay. And again, no matter what, you're only, you only have one choice. You're either going to bet opposite or you're going to bet repeat. Okay. So that's, that's that. Okay. Let me, let me just show you uh, one or two more things in this video um, that may help you become a better player and uh, kind of go from there. Let me get a fresh scorecard. I, I'm going to show you some, just a couple other basic systems. I think I talked about negative progressions and some other things, but let's talk about, let's talk about some other basic uh, approaches that have evolved over the years. And they're really road systems and they don't really look at, they, they'll win some games, uh, but in fact, uh, you know, you're going to need more data to, to make an intelligent decision on what to bet. And that's what we talk about in the private forum. But I do want to show you just some basic systems. Um, one of them is called uh, System 40, which is really just basically betting opposites. Okay, I'm not sure why we just don't call it opposites. <laughs> uh, no matter what, uh, what wins, you just always bet opposite. Okay. Okay. And then we assign modes to it. So... This is, you always bet opposite, so here, okay, bet opposite. Now see, if it wins, if you lose, you still bet opposite of what just won, okay? So if I bet one here, okay, let's say that one. Now, the way we bet system 40, as we call it, is simply after you use the modes. So if you bet, if you lose three times in a row, instead of betting opposites, you go to repeats. So here, let's say, for instance, we bet there and we bet there. Now we're betting system 40 in mode two. Well, after two losses in a row, instead of betting opposite, we're going to bet repeat. And there's various ways to determine how long you stay on it. Then it's, it's pretty much up to you. You can stay on it one time and then go back to betting opposites. Or you can stay on it till you lose. So that is system 40. Pretty basic system. Bets opposites. So I hope, hope that gave you uh, some insight into what we talk about here at Beat the Casino. Of course, we have a lot more valuable information in a private forum, and, and we are a forum of, of players. Uh, so I would invite you to join Beat the Casino, uh, talk to some of our professional players, 
and, and get some more insight into how to play this game of Baccarat. It's a great game. So I want to thank you for watching the video. Uh, please click subscribe in the corner and subscribe to our channel. And, uh, you know, please visit us at uh, beatthecasino.com and let us know your thoughts and ideas, too. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, hey, I'm here with Jeremiah, one of our top players from BeatTheCasino.com. Jeremiah, did you have a good time playing tonight? Had a great time. Did you win some money? I won a lot of money. All right, would you tell anyone to join? If you are not a member, you have got to join up. It All is right. the best out there. Hey, don't forget to check out our website for the latest Baccarat and Blackjack information. We have players from all over the world. The best players in the world are members of our website. And let me tell you, it's a lot more fun when you win. You could be a member too. Don't forget, BeatTheCasino.com. blackjack information. We have players from all over the world. The best players in the world are members of our website. And let me tell you, it's a lot more fun when you win. You could be a member too. Don't forget, beatthecasino.com.